a Midnight Waffles podcast. This is Battle Stations, a podcast about the Columbus Destroyers and the Arena Football League. I'm Frank Walker. So, you know how when you're watching a game, uh, you're sitting on the couch, you're trying to enjoy it, and then the game hits a, a moment of extra tension. And during that, you kind of stand up and you, you're kind of pacing a little bit. Especially when those moments are tense and you're just not sure what's going to happen. That was me for the majority of the second half of the game this last weekend. That was frustrating beyond beyond reason, what we saw. And as soon as the game was over, I tweeted this, that it was the Destroyers' best half of football and their worst half of football all in one game. And, and I don't, when you watch games like that, you almost wonder to yourself, is it better to lose this way or would you rather just kind of been, you know, beat from the beginning of it? And I mean, obviously you want the team to do well. So, I mean, it was good to see them clicking on all cylinders in the first half. But that second half, that was rough. Uh, I, I mean, as, as kind of a, a comparison point, in the first half, The Destroyers had four drives. The first three ended in touchdowns. The last one was just the end of the half. That that was it. They just, they just, that was it. The second half, they had an interception, field goal, field goal, safety. And it's just, it was beyond frustrating to watch that game because those field goals, it was something where it's, you know, maybe we could score here. Maybe something could happen. And I'm not questioning the idea to go for the field goal because, honestly, the way the game ended up, it was in the destroyer's hands. If it wasn't for that safety, they win that football game. I remember watching the game, and when they held them on fourth down, I was like, okay, f- good, that's good. And my I was my wife was there watching it with me, and she was like, okay, so they, they're going to win, right? And I was like, nah, because they're on the one. They, they have to move the ball somewhere. They just can't lose it. And then there was the fumble, which was just terrifying, and then the safety. And it was just... And then they had to kick the ball back, and then the, the, the Valor score that last second touchdown, which you can't put too much on the defense there because on you'll hear it in the interview later with Coach Sock, but I, I mentioned that the... You know, well, when you give up 29, you expect to win. And he's like, well, our defense only gave up 22. And he's right on that. If it wasn't for the pick six in the third quarter, the, the, the game's different. I mean, it's just, it was just such a rough game to watch. It was so difficult in so many ways. And I, it, it, it was, it was frustrating. And it's one of those things where as a Destroyers fan, when you came into this season, you were hoping to see good things. And the thought process was, well, you know what? It's a six-team league. Four teams make the playoffs. We have a good shot of making the playoffs this season. That, that's that's running away from us real quick. Um, I know coming into this game, the last game against the Valor there, I was like, well, we, we have a pretty good chance. We have a, a shot to make this work. And then that's, that's not where things are going. Um... It's just not. I mean, at this point, I mean, they still could. I mean, don't get me wrong here. I mean, the, the at this point, there is a 2-3 and three team that will make the playoff. I mean, where we're at in the standings, Albany's 5-0, and oh, Baltimore's 3-2, and two, Washington's 3-2, and two, Atlantic City's 2-3, and three, Philadelphia's 2-3, and three, the Destroyers are 0-5. I mean, in theory, could you catch fire, win some games, and sneak into that fourth spot? You could. Um, I mean, it, it's something where... That middle of four teams, the three and twos, the two and threes, there's only one game, so, you know, kind of dividing them. Albany's pulling away a little bit. But, it, I mean, they could make it. They could. But I, I think the Destroyers had a different mindset coming into this season. And I'll talk a little bit more about it after the after the interviews we play here. So we got a couple interviews this week. We got our weekly talk with Coach Sock, which we are always thrilled to have he's he's great with his time with us to let us do that um and then we got a writer for afl fan zone kiki who she's uh writes about the soul um big soul fan and we've got her uh 
So we'll we'll get her. You know, we've got a, an interview with her where she's gonna uh, give us some idea what to expect. Um, and again, I'm I'm gonna because maybe some people are new to the show now that the season started. Kind of the premise of this get thing, guys, is that each week I want to give you an idea of what's going on in the coach's head, and then get a voice from the team we're going to be playing. Because I, I get it, you're busy on the weekends, especially during the summer, so you probably don't watch all the teams. But this will give you a good idea of the names and the people to look into and and to see what's going on. So. Uh, Enjoy the interviews, and I'll be right back. All right, welcome to the Battle Stations podcast. Destroyer's head coach, Matt Salk. Uh, now, every week, coach, when I've asked how you're doing, you're saying you're still alive. After last week, are you still alive at this point? <laughs> uh, if, there, if I was a cat with nine lives, I'm probably at about eight and a half at this point. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I will say that was, uh, that, was, that, was, that was an interesting okay. game to watch, man. Yeah. I, you so, know, it's... it's it's a young team, and you know, it's like they just don't know how to close out the game yet. And it's just—it was just a weird, it was a weird game. But yeah, go ahead. It was—it it was frustrating to say the least. Yeah, I last week my first remark after the game ended was the Destroyers played their best half of football and their worst half of football in the same game. W- would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, we we started on offense. We were three for three on drives. Uh, Grant was twelve for twelve. Uh, we come out in the second half, and, you know, the first play is an INT for a touchdown. Um, and then it was a grind from there on out. And, and really the grind didn't really have anything to do with Washington. It just had to do with um, a young QB that kind of lost his rhythm and, you know, struggled a little bit. And, but, you know, here's here's the thing that, uh, that I go back to is, you know, we had our chances without a doubt to win this game. We, we throw a touchdown. Um, were not aligned properly at the wide receiver position. Um, and it was an unbelievable throw. You know, it was a tight window of about a foot. He made the throw. It's called back. And now you're kicking a field goal instead of, you know, instead of that touchdown. Um, so, you know, he ended up grading out, you know, Grant graded out about 80, um, which is great uh, for a young guy. And, you know, you take away the INT for a touchdown and we're winning that game. And that's, that's kind of the frustrating part because it's just one of those plays where, you know, as a young guy, you see it all the time, but you know, as a veteran, you don't really see a, 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 a Jack making a play like that. Yeah, it was, it was unique seeing that making that. And that, that's kind of the second time this week. I remember, I remember, or not yep. this week, but I remember in the Albany game, uh, one of their linebackers just made an incredible play on a pick that, that kind of seemed to put, put you guys behind the eight ball there. Um, so, I mean, in the first half, Grant was 12 for 12, like you were saying. What what do you see when you go back, when you went back and watched the film, what were those differences between the first half and the second half of this game that were the big? Because, I mean, you're right. The Destroyers were rolling in the first half, scoring a lot of points. It, and to go from that to going getting two field goals in the second half, wh- what happened from, from one to the other there? Well, I think you, you kind of look at the fact that um... – you know, it, it just started in that, in that, literally in that first play. And it just really, you know, it just takes all of the wind out of sails when something like that happens. It just, you know, as, as a veteran quarterback, you're probably going to bounce back a little bit quicker. But, you know, as a young guy, you know, things change. It's just, it's different. You've never had that happen before. You're like, wow, this is, this was a great half. Like, I'm feeling really high coming out of it. And then it's like first play, and it's like, oh, my God, what just happened? And how do I, you know, how do I continue from that? And those are the things that he'll learn how to deal with. And obviously, you know, again, you, you don't see a ton of veterans throw picks to the Jacks because they, you know, they know their timing and all that stuff. And that's just something that he's still learning. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, it, in the end to me, you know, he made the throw when it had to happen. And it's just unfortunate that we were not lined up properly. So he can make those key throws, and he did uh, for us to have a chance to win. We just have to, as a team, stop making mental mistakes like that. And that's one of the things that we, you know, we're going to address this week and and try to try to fix and 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 deal with. All right. Now, it sounds like you're coming down on this as as there's kind of an old cliche in sports when you talk about it, as far as teams having to learn how to win. Is that really kind of what we're looking at at this point? A bunch of young guys who, 
for the most part, don't have a whole lot of arena football league experience having to figure this out. Yeah, I think, you know, again, we're, we are what we are. We're, we're a little bit younger, but you know, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. And I hate excuses. I'm just, I'm not one of those people, you know, with me, it's like, eventually you got to figure it out or, you know, we get new people to come in. But, you know, as, as a franchise, we, we wanted to have the process to where we wanted younger guys because we wanted to build a franchise and we wanted to build for future seasons too. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, we just happen to, you know, not close, not close out the game. And to me, that's frustrating. And, you know, our defense did their job to stop them at the, you know, the one inch line. Uh, we, you know, we get the snap, you know, you look at the replays, more likely it was short. Um, and, you know, I can't really put that on Grant. The next play, um, you know, my tight end gets, you know, blown back and steps onto the quarterback. And, you know, those two plays had nothing to do with Grant. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's not just him failing. It, it's in other individuals not really understanding the circumstances not understanding the situation and what needs to happen um, in order to do your job properly. And it, it, again, it's something that we've kind of been talking a lot about this season so far, but it's, um, I mean, it's another week where I thought in a lot of ways the defense really showed up. I mean, when you hold a team to 29 points, you expect that to be enough. I mean, how, how good has this defense been for the team this year? Well, it's been great. I mean, again, you, you said 29, but in reality it's 22. I mean, seven of those points were an INT return for a touchdown. So, you know, you're holding that team that has been kind of hot lately to 22 points. Uh, the quarterback was under 50% completion rate um, through an interception. And to me, I mean, that's just a fantastic job by them. It was just one of those – to me, it was a defensive battle. Um, you know, early on, we were, we were really hot. And in the second half, you know, we had two field goals. Um, you know, you take away one of those field goals with a touchdown, which we had if we uh, aligned properly. And, you know, again, this is a completely different ball game. And it's just one of those things where, you know, it's just, it's, it's a learning, um, it's a, it's a game that you can learn from, um, and understand, you know, you know, just proper alignment, just mental, mental mistakes is where we really need to focus on and, and fix because those can be fixed. That's a great thing like talent wise and everything else, this team can play with any team. And I think we proved that, but it's the mental mistakes. It's the costly errors that are the difference between the games where you've got an Albany, Albany team that's five and zero. like they don't, they don't make those. And if they do make it, they're able to overcome it. And right now we're not able to overcome those issues. All right. Now, this coming Saturday, you've got uh, playing the Philadelphia team who's who's on a skid of their own. Uh, they're on a, a three game losing streak. What what do you tell the guys? How do you? I mean, how do you plan for a team that's got a, a, a veteran quarterback and that you know you, after all these weeks of feeling like you're just so close to finally getting that first win? How do you plan for this this Philadelphia team? I mean, they still have a guy who's who's won an arena bowl, um, a guy who's been an all arena guy. Um, you know, they've, they've had their struggles and we just have to continue to try to execute, um, not make mental mistakes. And it's the same thing I tell these guys, if we don't turn the ball over, we will win the game. And we had one turnover this game, which is, again, you look at the score, it was really the difference in the game. So if we can just stop that part of it, um, then I think that, you know, again, we have the talent to compete with any team in this league. Um, we just have to be better in situational awareness and we have to be more careful with the football um, so that, you know, with our defense that we can kind of help them out and not continue to put them in, in the bind to, to make the play. Um, so, yeah, I would just say the fact that, you know, we're going against a vet, it's going to be tough and we just got to make sure we take care of the football. And if we do, like I tell them every week and what you see, you know, stat wise, we're in every game. And if we just continue to improve and fix that, I have no doubt that eventually we'll get the win. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Coach. I'll, I'll let you get back to your evening. I appreciate it. Take care. Welcome to the Battle Stations podcast. Kiki here, a writer for AFLFanzone.com. How are you doing tonight? Oh, pretty good. Weather's a little tough, but <laughs> we'll make it through. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so it it's been an interesting run for the the soul recently. Started off two and zero, now they've dropped three straight. How how's the season going for them in in relation to maybe expectations coming into the season? Um, well, I know that uh, from what I gather, they were pretty hopeful that we would be um, a lot further along, right? A lot further than two and three right now. And um, they're looking to try and break that three losing the three game losing streak. I, I don't know if that's possible just because of the way they've been playing. Um, I know that uh, they had two injuries the last game. I think it was Outlaw and I believe it was Washaw. Washaw. They both were injured. I don't know if they're coming back for um, game six game week six but i'm hoping they do um but i just don't see the lack of i don't even know if i would say lack of effort on the defense but i just feel like ferns and romaine they haven't been as impactful as they were the first two games so i'm looking for more from those two guys basically all right, so so it, is it predominantly the defense that's been the weak point um, in in these two losses here? I would say that overall, I would say that it would definitely be the defense, in my opinion. I think defense actually, probably for the last couple games, I think that they've definitely not been as impactful as they have been in the first two games last season. I think they definitely need to work on that. And also, too, I know that we lost um, Money Reynolds um, early on in the season. He's back now. Um, and I think we got back uh, Hollis. He came back, I think it was the last game. So I'm looking for more from him as well. But I'm just hoping that they can come together. Because I know I think the game before last, it was almost like tit for tat. They just couldn't stop. Um, they just couldn't stop the plays at all. They couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop the pass. They couldn't do anything. Every time you turned around, you know, they scored. We came back and scored, but they just could not stop the defense, not stop the offense um, at all. Um, I think that was when they were playing um, Kings of Hours, if I'm not mistaken. But I think that overall, if they could, if they could beef up on their defense, especially Ferns, I mean, like, I think that he really could uh, be a lot more impactful on the on 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 the field in general. That's just my opinion. All right. Now, whenever you talk about the Philadelphia Soul, it's, you're a little bit remiss if you don't mention the the quarterback Dan Rodabaugh. Um I, I mean. This season, he's completing passes at a 60% rate, 23 touchdowns, four interceptions. Is it something when you're watching the game, it feels like he's getting frustrated seeing that it's it's falling apart, or is it does it feel like some of it's on him, or or what do you see from your perspective? From my perspective, I would say that I would say that it's probably about 25% on him. <laughs> I, I definitely think it's more – I think that he's doing a pretty decent job. But then again, there are times where he is hot. When he's hot, he's hot. And when he's not, he's not. But I would say that overall, I think that he's doing a pretty decent job in terms of um, uh, making plays and, 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 and getting the ball to where it has to be. But I do see – the last couple games, I do see some frustration um, with the other players in terms of um, making plays and, and 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 getting points on the board and keeping points on points off of their off of their um, their scoreboard. All right, now if what do the soul need to go right this weekend if they're when they're playing the destroyers? Um, what you know what what signs if you're seeing if you're watching the game. What would you see that makes you go, oh, it looks like we're got it this week. It looks like things are going well for us. What what would that be? I would say that if Darius Prince has a good game, I would say that if 
we get to see ferns, specifically if we get to see Romaine have a pretty decent game and really, you know, hit those tackles and um, they really penetrate. Guerrera, I think his name is, um, if they keep from scoring and shut him down, we'll be okay this game for sure. Yeah, Guerra Guerra is kind of that's what that's the I think that's the key. If they can keep him isolated and keep him from out of that 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 end zone, I believe that we'll have a pretty decent game. Well, I think we'll be in pretty good shape to win. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time tonight, Kiki. It was uh, it was a pleasure. Hope to talk to you again soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. Again, thanks, my guests, as always. Here, uh, that's their their part of what makes the show possible in a lot of ways. Uh, so, wrapping up, a couple other things I wanted to touch on before we're done this week. Um, tennis this week dropped a little bit, which is makes sense. I mean, from the opening game to that one, and it was a Saturday afternoon as opposed to Saturday evening. So, sixty one hundred. Uh, not a not a problem, I would say at all. Um, when you look at the overall league uh, in the Arena Football League this year, and look at the attendance numbers, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at Arena Fan who keeps a good chart to kind of track these. Uh, Columbus is fourth in the league in average attendance uh, behind Albany. Uh, number two is Philadelphia. Number three is Washington. So it, it, they're averaging 65, 78. Now, that, again, those are average numbers. So they're they're doing okay. Um, again, it, I think there was this built-in idea that it's coming back. All the old people are going to come back to it. But we've discussed on previous shows why that's not exactly a, a one-to-one ratio and how that works and how they're kind of building again from scratch, especially with a lot of the fans out there. Now, the... I mentioned that I was going to mention this before, you know, before the Salk interview, and it was something he said, so I wanted him to say it before I talked about it. He talked about they had a plan of building something. And I do think that when you look at the teams around the league, and I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong. I mean, obviously, when you're the team that's 0-5, people are going to say maybe you are, but I'm starting to see a little bit of the method and some of the madness here. Um so what we're looking at is it, there was really an idea of building the team, which I think is a little counterintuitive in the Arena Football League currently because the Arena Football League currently, with its collective bargaining agreement, teams players only can sign a one-year deal. But I think when they went to build this team, I think Coach Sock had an idea in his head of, I want to, you know, build a culture. I want to start building a program. I want to start building something where I can, you know, bring guys in and start developing younger players, that sort of thing. I really think that was the idea, the mindset here. And and it's 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 the kind of thing where, you know, you see it in Grant Russell. You see moments where he looks great. You see, you know, Fabian Guerra look really good. You see them bringing in guys who are who look really good and, and it, they may be able to do what they're wanting to do. I want what I'm here to say is I I I want everyone to stay on board for the ride of what's happening because this is the kind of thing where I mean it could turn this week maybe all of a sudden the, the destroyers show and, and show they can do it and the thing is when you go back and watch these games uh, with the exception of one or two of them maybe I mean it's one of those things where the destroyers are really in it any any given week so if the luck turns one given week I mean an zero and five run I think we could see I legitimately think we could see five and O run out of the destroyers because I think they have that uh, ability I and I think it's something where when you've seen them this close week after week that could happen I mean this week they play Philadelphia the week after that Atlantic City comes to Columbus week after that Baltimore comes to Columbus week after that the soul come to Columbus the next week, uh, they go to Baltimore again. These are games where there there have been times where they've been in all of these, and they've been, you know, a lot of their own mistakes have hurt them on things. So, so we'll see what happens. I'm excited. I mean, I'm <laughs> my excitement's tempered, but now I'm I'm really kind of honed in on what they're going to do for the rest of the season. I mean, when you start zero and five in a twelve game season, 
I'm real interested to see what happens. So stay on board with us here, guys. Uh, hope you enjoy the game on Saturday. I'll be watching and go destroyers. Thank you for listening to Battle Stations. 